G'day guys, Carla from Go Travel. Today in the garage with a donkey yet again. What are we doing today? We are playing with some basic electrical stuff. So we've got a 30 inch light bar that we're going to install behind the grill. Thank you to everyone that helped me out on the Facebook groups. A lot of cool lighting options for these things, a lot of cool things going on. Decided simple, clean, sleek, single ray, get it behind the grill. I figured we'll give this option a go to start with and we'll see if I like it. We've got the unit end extracts out of the big girl, so we saved this from the patrol. Such a good radio, I figured we're going to put this one in the donkey. Uh, Pirate Kempco aerial bracket for the bonnet, because how can you not love James's energy? He is just insane. I love that dude. So, g'day legends! <laughs> Gotta love Pirate. <laughs> Decided we're not going to stick the big stumpy black aerial on. Ended up buying this tiny little RFI whip. Just want to go with the clean, sleek, simple lines. So, tiny little aerial shouldn't be that noticeable. And in all honesty, I actually don't use my UHF that much, only when I'm traveling in convoy with mates. So, this will be more than adequate for what I need. The Pirate Cam K bracket, it literally just goes on there. Just be careful when you unbolt your bonnet. You see that's sort of the way it's going to sit. Just a simple, sleek design. We'll get that bolted up. Uh, 13 mil bolts on the bonnet. Just make sure you hold the bonnet when you undo it, just so it doesn't slip down and hit the glass. You see, just tiny little bracket. Sits pretty stealthy. It sits nice and flush, nice and flat too. So if you want a big stumpy fiberglass aerial, you can definitely do that. Simple, sleek, tiny little aerial. I actually did see, there's like a cool little stumpy aerial that you can get. I think it's like an American mob that make them. Um, I think it's got like a stealth antenna or something like that. I think I might actually see if I can get one of them. So yeah, when you look from inside the car, just yeah, not too big, not too obtrusive. So I think I like that. I think that's going to be good. What a mission around the UHF area wire. So in the grommet down there, there's like a little nipple you can cut, feed through, happy days. Turns out on the inside, you've actually got to cut the inside of the plug too. And it's quite hard to get your hand up in there to cut it. But we worked it out, we got it done. Clearly I'd forgotten that since day, mate. All I've done on the inside, just fed a bit of wire through from the driver's side to the passenger side, right at the front of the firewall there. Just gonna tape the power wires through because I'm gonna keep the base of the unit in the passenger side. Probably might just put it in behind the carpet here somewhere. Easy as that. So all the panel with your light controls, it just clips forward. It is a bit tight the first time you pull it off. Then, We've got our little fuse box in the back here. That's right, I need a micro circuit. Okay, so we've just literally put the adder fuse, adder circuit into this 36 position, which is the rear parking aid. Accessory power. Comes on. Accessory power off. No, happy days. Two ways, always going off. Easy, done. Then, earth. Literally F down there. I managed to find some dead space in behind the carpet. If I get the unit down there, it would probably sit a bit better, but for now, that's okay. So it just sits there, which means the cord will stay out of the way. I think I'm just gonna mount the handpiece mount somewhere there. One of my followers, I can't remember who you are, I'm sorry, put me onto this 3M Scotch. Um, it's like a heavy duty sort of Velcro, like locking tape. So it is the best tape because you sort of get a bit of flex in it. I want to say it sticks like shit to a blanket. That'll just hang down there out of the way. Glove box doesn't affect it. Base just tucked away behind the carpet there. Simple, out of the way. You can see as a passenger, if you like to sit with your legs wide, it actually it's not intrusive at all. Easy enough to get, cord stays out of the way. Really, it's just a simple, clean way to do it. Of course, there's a heap of different brackets available. Pirate Campco actually makes some cool brackets that hides the baseball in the club box and handpiece over here. But me personally, I don't want to be hitting the leg with the cord every time I drive. I'd rather it be on the passenger side where it doesn't affect me. And look, in all honesty, as a passenger, it won't affect the passenger. But if it did, they can put up with it. Literally, just reach forward. Grab it, plenty of length on the cord to be able to talk. Let's see if it works. Can I get a radio check, please?
Yeah, that's not a good sign. Maybe everyone's got their radios off. That's all right. Back up plan. And held. <laughs> copy, copy. Perfect, it works. There you have it. That's the two way, all done and dusted in the Ranger Raptor. Pirate Camp K bracket, two bolts, tiny little RFI aerial, sleek, bonnet mount. Add a circuit in the glove box. Got the handpiece mounted just out of the way over here. Everything works as it should. Like I say, anyone can install a two way. There is literally nothing to it. Everything nowadays just basically plugs and plays. There's not a lot to it at all. All right, let's start tearing the front of this thing apart and have a look at how this light bar is gonna fit. So the main reason I went with this light force light bar is everyone that gave me feedback on the Facebook groups, this light bar pretty much is the perfect length to fit in this couple of holes back here. Best thing is, is roof switches. So five and six are actually triggered by high beam. I believe these two wires on the front here are the wires for five or six. It took me forever to work out how to get the grill out of this thing. So you can definitely feel it had a couple more bolts in it. Turns out this little bottom piece is like a fascia piece. Clips in, pull that forward. Just be careful not to damage it because it is easy to damage it. And then uh, you'll find there's another three bolts in the bottom of the grill. So easy enough once you work out how to do it. All right, two bolts in the top of the grill. So the reason everyone uses these light force bars is because they're quite slim, as you can see. So not much weight behind that. Everyone seems to space these brackets up a little bit. So let's bolt it all together and we'll see what it looks like. Yeah, that's pretty solid back there. Got it sort of sitting flush against this mount, so that sort of indicates that it's straight like forward and back alignment. As for the up down alignment, gonna be a little bit hard. I think that's shining a little bit up at the moment, but we should be able to adjust that easy enough. Uh, a lot of people bend these brackets, uh, bending them, you could do a couple of things one forward, one back. Um, I've just put like four mil worth of black washer spaces in there. I did put one two mil space to lift it up a little bit. We'll see how the grill looks on the front. As far as light bars go, that's not too bad. You can see that there's definitely going to be some light block by the grill, but whatever, is what it is. Alright, so this mess is the light force wiring harness. What I'm going to do, because I don't want bulk amounts of wires, I want this to be simple and clean, I'm actually going to cut this up. I'll reuse the relay, I'll reuse all the wire from it, but I'm just going to cut it up, clean it up, and trim it up. Alright, so that is all the wiring that we cut out that you don't need. So all we did is the wiring of the light bar manages to sort of sit hidden behind the grill. It just follows up, follows the factory harness out, put the plug there, a little bit of a loop on that. Uh, trigger wire comes into the relay, power straight to the battery, everything's earthed off this point here. So when all the cover goes on that should just sit nicely down like that. Yeah, clean, simple install. Don't know about the position. I think the position might need to come up a little bit, but we'll have to test it out at night time. Looks good, clean, sleek, fits behind there nicely. I like how sort of stealth it looks, but it'll all be relevant to how much light it actually puts out. Because I do really like what Ty Fenwick has done with his as well. I do like the laser lamps, but 350 bucks versus 1400 bucks. I'm a tight ass. 350 every day. <laughs> don't know. Maybe we'll change this. Maybe we won't. We'll see how it goes. See what it performs like. But we'll have a look in the dark and uh, we'll see how she goes.
Well, that's it, all buttoned up. Slay gas, clay gas. We'll see how it looks at night time. Well, definitely had something. Lights always hard to see on camera, but I do like the roof lights, that's kind of cool. It's not a bad option, it's just not a great option. Just go back to the low beam for a stick. So it's low beam, turn high beam. It's high beam, and then that's with light beam. So it's okay. Not great, but okay. So I will just show you this. You can see high beam bottom left. So high beam on. Auxiliary six turns it on and off. So in the daytime, fair bit of difference. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Anything, comment it below. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. And until next time, go travel.